everybody welcome to the channel welcome back to another video by me just me just Kateo. i'm so glad to have you on here this is going to be a great video because it's the first and probably maybe the last one of its kind. So welcome. Before we get started on this relationship Q&A, please do subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, join the family on Instagram, join the family on Twitter, join the family here on YouTube. And I would love to see your retweets, reposts on my stuff. We're on the road to 30K as I record this. I'm so, so excited to have you guys here. We're gonna get into this relationship Q&A and we're gonna answer all the questions that is why i have a drink because never done this one before <laughs> okay we're gonna get into it i'm not even gonna waste time i got so many 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 questions about this here relationship that i'm gonna get into with you guys today so let's get into the video mm. all right so to give you a little bit of context if you have been following the channel you know that i recently well it's not really recently around july last year got into a new relationship i was single for quite some time for a couple of months maybe four or five months and uh, i recently got together um back together with somebody that i was with in 24 23 we were together for about two and a half years and we recently reconnected now so i've spoken about this in many of my vlogs if you follow my instagram content you will know that um i go out with him quite a lot and i do reels and all of that so you will know none of this will be a surprise to you so i'm going to get into your questions because i said i'm going to be doing a relationship q a here's the thing about me gents okay there's a difference between privacy and secrecy i am private about my personal life yes but it's not a secret it's not a secret to anybody you guys know i share the stuff on my channel i share the stuff on my instagram socials all of that so i'm not closed off to answering questions about my relationship so that is why we are here today <laughs> um firstly how did you meet i think that is the most basic simplest one how did you meet i'm so happy for you thank you very much we met when i was 24 i think 2015 2016 we can't even recall correctly i think he can rather than me we met around that time and we met online so it wasn't something that was uh a hey, go to the shops meet somebody no we actually met online and kicked off that way non dumiso asks why did you give this relationship a chance the second time around we call this one phase two of our relationship because there was phase one before for two and a half years Phase one, we were both in very different places in our lives where we were trying to build each other, build ourselves for ourselves, our careers. We we're trying to find our way in the world. Um, we were very, very different at that time in terms of what we wanted, what was most important to us and all of that. So we decided to call it off then. And then in that whole time, we never really lost contact. We'd be people who would communicate after a couple of months and i typically when i break up with somebody i drop them i drop them i block i remove myself from the situation i dissociate myself chat okay i move on and i start something new i do not go back to exes except this time around and um i made that exception because i felt that nine years later <laughs> This person is back in my life again it must mean something um is it written in the stars i don't know uh, but it's not something that was of convenience or anything like that this is somebody that has been in my life consistently and respected the fact that i was in relationships during that time that we were apart and we found ourselves where we were last year july and it kicked off things kicked off they kicked off Rounding perception says that women fall in love with a man who's like their father do you think your man is more like Ngati Malel? I uh, I find lots of similarities in my father and in this here gent okay between me and him I find 
that I notice a lot of similarities between him and my father. And I can see normally it's the drive, it's the passion. This person is very passionate about his work and he's very passionate about uh, family life and very, very passionate about um, building himself and becoming better for himself but also for other people, very kind, which is something that my father is. As much as he's very stringent, <laughs> but he's very kind too. And I see the similarities, even in the way they communicate or things that they say, not communicate with each other, even in the way that they just address me or the things that they say, I find many, many, many similarities between him and my father. So. Did I choose this here one? No, I didn't. I didn't know that there would be these kinds of similarities, but they all happen to be Scorpios. And my father is a Scorpio. My sister is a Scorpio. I'm a Gemini. Not necessarily the best combination, clicky clicky, but for somehow we've made it, we've made it work. And yeah, I do see many, many similarities in him that I find in my father. And maybe that's, that's something that attracted me even more to him, especially in phase two. I need to see which questions he answered so that we can get into it. Because there are certain questions um, that he answered that I will read out and then I'll answer for myself. So I'll, I'll answer for him and read it out and then I'll answer for myself. Uh, the first question is, I'm happy for you, babes. How has, thank you, sweetie. How has your relationship impacted both of your lives? And what do you all like or love about each other? So this is his response. I am reading it. You can see it. I'm reading it. His response says, with regard to impact, my relationship with you, me, my relationship with Gatleo has further taught me the value in being patient and present. I mean, who is he? so stupid I don't even like it you don't even go here uh, it has made me assess how I show up as a partner and be supportive to your views my views uh, and growth even through challenging times it has also prompted me to realize the value in making time hence why I say this person is busy so a lot of the time he gotta make time for me he ain't got no choice <laughs> What I like about you is that you're caring, warm, and also ambitious. You are strong in getting over adversity. And that's great and everything, but he don't even go here. Ugh, whatever, bro. This is how I actually react when I'm nervous or I feel like, oh my God, that was so cute. I would rather just be like, no, you don't even go here, bro. Um, so for me, how the relationship has impacted both our lives, I feel strongly truly that um this relationship has taught me one that not everything is as it seems you may think that you have ended something with somebody that's it or whatever and then god the universe the stars something happens to align you to be with that person do i see this as another opportunity Absolutely. Do I see it as an opportunity to be in a place where, you know, now we are at different parts of our lives and we can be better for each other as opposed to in phase one? Absolutely. How he's impacted my life in particular, I've kind of slowed down in how I respond to partners. I've slowed down in how I respond. And maybe that's largely because of his personality where I, come, I have to come correct. Because this person is not going to tolerate me just going off at the click of a hat and going, yeah, 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 yeah. So something about being in this relationship has taught me to become a little bit more softer as opposed to how I was in phase one. And I am softer. I'm more in tune with uh, listening. I'm more in tune with being more present, as he said, as well. But also at the same time to understand that we are not the same. Him and I are very different even though we share similar characteristics and qualities, but we're very different. And difference doesn't necessarily mean that it will cause a problem. Difference, in fact, might enhance the dynamic that you have with that person, provided you are in a position where you want to work on it and you want to build a healthy, happy, content space for the two of you to thrive in, in the relationship. So help me quite a lot be more present, but also 
help me be more softer in how I approach conflict, help me be more aware of what I say so that I don't hurt someone, whether intentionally or unintentionally, but also helped me to be um, apologetic when I am wrong. I'm really, really hard to apologize, but I've been learning it over the years. My sister even taught me that, bro, you don't even apologize, fam, you know? And now this has also taught me that, nah, bro, do better. So it has impacted my life quite, quite positively. One which he answered was, which is the second and last one, which he answered. Uh, the question was, hey, sweetie, first and foremost, I'm super happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> it's so beautiful to see you happy in love. My question is, what attracted you to your man and vice versa? Looks, personality, aura, and all, honey. So he answers and he says, looks, well, yes, with a capital Y-E-S. But I understand what you're looking at right now, okay? And I say that all the time, you better realize, you better recognize when I, when I speak to him. But obviously it's jokingly, but also I mean it. I mean it. Um, looks well, yes, but that I will not get into. But what I will say is your caring nature and nurturing heart is one of your strongest qualities. Your willingness to help and support and listen, wait, your willingness to support and listen to a partner is also up there for me. All these mentioned above are only rivaled by how smart you are. I mean, I, I mean, who is this person? Then of course, there's your taste in music, cars, food, and quality time. So that's nice for him. Good for him for answering this year more. Okay, good for him now. Can you tell that I'm trying not to blush? So I'm trying to joke it off? Right, okay. So my response to what attracted uh, him to me and vice versa, uh, looks, facts. That, that person is a beautiful specimen. He's very good looking. And my sister loves to say that Kakao has got such great choice and good looking men, blah, 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 all this stuff. He's quite good looking for me. So, I mean... I need to appreciate that, right? I do, I do. But um, the personality, definitely up there for me. But what attracted me most to this person is kindness, kindness. This person is truly kind. As much as he has his moments, chat, where he is not so kind, and he proved that to me, but I was acting a fool. I really was acting a fool. But he proved that to me that, listen, don't, don't, don't take my kindness for weakness, Katel, okay? Um, but for me, one thing that I've always looked for in a partner, number one, top of the scale, is kindness. Um, because it matters to me that even in conflict, even in moments when that person is not happy with you, even in moments where they cannot stand you, they do not lose their kindness towards you. So somebody can be mad but not respond to you in a way in which will break you or demean you or attack your family or your friends or make you feel small by doing what they do and they hurt you in that way. When someone is kind, they take into cognizance that what I say could potentially damage this person. So let me be careful. Let me approach how I say. One of his biggest things is he'll always say, I hear you. Let me not listen to react and rather to respond. So we'll take some time, we'll have a cooler moment, and then we'll drink. <laughs> we'll drink and then we'll talk about it. Then we'll sit and we'll talk about it and we'll have a decent conversation like decent adults. Okay, uh, so for me, it's definitely the looks, but kindness is really up there, top, top up there. And uh, the ambition, you know, about what he wants to achieve in his life. His dreams are wild. And I love somebody who dreams, because even me, I am Voyo the dreamer. Um, so looks and all of that, eh, it's fine. Those are really superficial things, but Honestly, truly, it's the kindness for me, and it's how softly this person treats me. <gasps> Woo, y'all! Treated softly. Giving heart, 
has his moments where he gets mad, but everybody gets mad. And and for me, that just that just stood out for me, truly. And one of the things that we love about one of, I always say it's our love languages, our love language, uh, which is not truly love languages. We always say food, drinks, cars, and music is one thing. Th those things are our love languages to each other. And I absolutely love that. One of the things that we do the most is eat out. That's why good sister dang on this way, chat. But um, we love that about each other. And we, we you know, we, we support that. We support that kind of life for each other. So that it just makes us better for ourselves and for each Have other. Have you ever compromised your values a bit for this relationship? Also, do you see yourself taking it to the next level and moving in together? Have I ever compromised my values? Absolutely not. More than anything, this is the one relationship where my values come first. I compromised my values with my previous relationships quite a bit. This one, I state my peace. I state what I want. I state what I would be comfortable with. I state that I am not happy with this. I do not compromise on how I feel about something. We're going to talk about it. We're going to address it. And we're going to get to the bottom of it. So more than anything, this relationship has helped me find my voice as a partner in a relationship. And not had me go, I, well, because it doesn't like this, let me just, mm, if I like it, I like it. And I met her to this partnership too. So if you like something, I get it. If I don't like it, doesn't necessarily mean I have to like everything you like. So we can work around that. But you must also apply the same energy to the things that I like that you may not like. I be like that sometimes. Um, do you see yourself taking it to the next level and moving in together? Absolutely. We talk about it all the time. We talk about marriage. We talk about children. We talk about uh, living together. It's a little bit trickier in this instance because we've both got our respective homes that we own and all of that. So working on that and it's, the conversation is slightly different. But do we talk about it? Absolutely. Do we talk about children moving in together? All of that, yes, we do. He doesn't have kids, so it, it, it makes things a lot easier. <laughs> Trust me, it makes things a lot easier. Who? Cat. Hi, Cat. If you was to pop, hey, girl. If you was to pop the question, do you see yourself settling with him forever considering your sexuality? Absolutely. My sexuality doesn't have, has, have her. My sexuality has no bearing on who I end up with, whether it's a man, uh, a woman, a uh, gender neutral person or gender non-conforming person. I, it doesn't matter. I see a future with that person and I see long-term marriage, starting a life with that person, not marriage, living together. We talk about all those things and do I see it with him? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> might I possibly be shooting myself in the foot by saying this and then life happens and whatever? No. At this time, that's how I feel, and I'm going to own how I feel. So, yes. Yes. Do I see it? Absolutely. Do we talk about it? Absolutely. Hi, Kat. You mentioned that you dated before. Could you please talk about why you gave it a second chance after so many years? To be honest, I don't even know why. <laughs> Let me be honest. Okay. Let me be honest. There might be a why here. The first time around in phase one, I said earlier on, things were different, all of that. But this person has always remained a constant in my life. So he would always call from time to time, visit and we spend time together and sit and chill, even though nothing, literally on my honor, nothing would happen. We would literally just hang out. He would respect the fact that I'm in a relationship. We would speak about things like that. And, but how he's always remained a constant in my life is definitely something that has made me consider giving this another opportunity. But truly, it's also just genuinely how he makes me feel when I'm around him. Uh, I can't think of any of my exes where I would go back because the memories that were good there were attached to so much pain and hurt as well that I don't see myself reconnecting with any of my exes. Here, the, the um, culmination of phase one of the relationship wasn't because it was something someone did to somebody or somebody cheated. It was none of that kind of stuff. It was just because 
we were just in different phases of our lives where certain things were more important and were more prioritized than the relationship. Whereas now, no, no, no. <laughs> the relationship is prioritized by a lot, a lot. It's put right up there at the top. So um, him also just really, when I'm in a bind or when I feel a certain way or when I whatever, this person jumps. And for me, that is amazing. I reciprocate the same behavior too. We've shared a lot about ourselves, about our pasts, about our um, previous relationships, about our childhood and whatever, where we've needed to lean on each other and uh, count on the support that the other person gives you. And because of that, that's probably another reason why I um, truly decided to give it another shot. Um, hi Kat, do you feel that it is easier to navigate this relationship because you were long-term friends before being in a romantic relationship? And I agree, yes. I do feel that being friends after phase one and keeping that contact after phase one, during phase one, having a basis of a friendship before we became lovers and before we split up and then got back together, that has always been a solid foundation. We never made, we never allowed how we felt about one another or what hurt us or what didn't hurt us crack who we were when we were together. Even though we knew to some degree that this person is in a relationship with somebody else and he's possibly in a relationship with somebody else and all of that, that was never a conversation when we were together. It would always be like, hey, I'm around your area. Can you sit? Let's chat. Da, 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 da. Let's go out. Let's have a drink. Nothing would happen, but there would always be lots of laughs and good food and catching up, honestly, truly. And um, for me, that's always been something that matters. So for me, it made this really much easier. And one of the biggest defining things I feel like that showed me was when I was away on a solo location by myself and I put it up there. It's the cradle solo location uh, in the, in, on my channel. And I was away and I had a really bad mental breakdown day that day. He was somewhere on the Arasa in Johannesburg somewhere and I was in the Northwest there by, um, I was there by uh, Machalisburg. I was there and he drove from where he was at like seven o'clock at night to come sit with me for a few hours before he left on a solo location. And for me, what do you even mean? No contest, no contest. Whereas I've been in re other relationships where I was in a bind or I was in an accident and I contacted my partner and my partner was sitting with friends and um, couldn't be bothered about coming to come see me or check on me or, or all of that. So when someone drops everything at the drop of a hat because you called, What unhealthy behaviors did you let go of from the previous relationship in order to have a healthier relationship this time? Brilliant question, this one. And my unhealthy behaviors is that I had developed a tendency of completely losing my shits. Completely. Screaming, shouting, things that just typically weren't even me towards someone. Um, I developed a tendency of swearing, I developed a tendency of lowering myself and responding in such just cold, demeaning, weird, off ways to people and all of that and the exes and whatever that um, I had to let go of that. I realized that I in and of myself was toxic, even though it was because of what I was put through in my previous relationship, we are not going to use what someone put you through as a reason for you to be toxic to someone else. So even though I knew that there were parts of me that were toxic, when I started this, I knew that I need to calm down. I need to reassess. I need to think about things before I say them. I need to voice my opinion in a way in which it doesn't hurt the other person, but in actual fact that it brings us together so that we can speak about how we truly feel about how we truly feel about how we truly feel about what. You know what I'm saying? The not trusting one, I didn't let it go. I'm just working on it and I'm more present 
this time around as I'm working on those toxic traits that I have that I do not want to bring into this here relationship here. Okay? Okay. How do you balance mental health and your relationship? Because sometimes relationship can take a toll on your mental health, especially if one is already struggling with mental health. So here's the thing. When it comes to mental health, I am struggling a lot. I've got bad days. I've got good days. I've become stronger over the years in how I learned to mitigate and manage my really bad days. I'm with someone who's got a very strong head on his shoulders, mental health. He goes through his things, but I don't know how he's managed to keep moving and all of them, blah, blah, blah. But how I balance mental health, this person has become a space for me where when I go to see when him, I go to see him, or if I'm having a bad mental health day or all of that, I use his space being around him as a place of reprieve and I use being around him as a space of comfort and a safe space. And I always say it and I say it in my tweets when I speak about him in particular that I found a safe space where even my bad days, my bad mental health days where I do not want to talk. There was a weekend where I didn't want to talk. I was going through absolutely all of it. and. He knew that I was having a bad week and all of that. And he said, come over to my place. We don't, there's no need to talk. There's no need nothing. And I went over there and all I did all weekend was eat and sleep. And there was barely any conversation. There were conversations here and there, but I used that space so that I could be there and relax and switch off and detox. And I even do that even now. I use that place where I will not be on my phone when I'm with him. I will not be checking social media much when I'm with him as opposed to how often I check it on a daily basis and all of that kind of stuff. So I use that as a safe space for me. Has he learned to um, see that on, on bad mental health days to tread a little bit more lightly with me? Absolutely. And sometimes it doesn't require us to say anything to each other it just requires you to just understand where i'm at i'm in this position please give me a moment and we do that and 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 <laughs> i mean i can't I guess it's been great i guess i mean whatever catch me aside um who is the extrovert or introvert in the relationship we are both introverts big time we're both introverts, so it's made things a lot easier for me. I realized that when I was with extroverts, the relationship would be a lot more harder to manage. Whereas when I'm with an introvert, we like being in the house together. We like going out and being together and not necessarily going out to a party and being around people. We like doing our things together. And it's just the two of us or just being in the house. And, um, that's comfortable for us. So I think it's helped that he's been an introvert because he totally, that he is an introvert because he totally gets where I come from uh, when my introversion hits, I suppose, you know. Um, hey Kat, how content are you with the amount of non-sexual affection in the relationship? Thoroughly. I mean, things like touching, things like words of affirmation. These are affections for me, right? Words of affirmation, touching, being close, in close proximity towards each other when we're sitting on a big couch and the other one's not over there. We're, we're close. There's always some form of touching that's happening, whether we're in the car or whether, and I'm quite content with that because it fills my, my cup. I like physical touch, so it fills my cup and I like words of affirmation, and this person's always encouraging me and telling me, you can do it, 25,000. You've already achieved so much, come on, get, go, 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 go. And for me, those are non-sexual forms of affection that happen in my relationship. Um, gift giving is a form of affection, and he gifts me stuff, so whatever, bro. I mean, I like them, I guess. Um, and all of that. So all of those things are forms of affection and those are on 1000 as well. So I'm quite, I'm quite happy. Very, very content with that. Hi Kat. What is the feeling that you get when you're around him that makes your current partner different from your exes? Safe. I feel safe. 
I feel secure. I feel like my emotions and how I feel and how I express myself is not going to be treated lightly. I feel like everything that I say is heard, it's respected, and if I don't like something, he acts actively to change it or he acts actively to do better right? Because you don't change something overnight. You do better. Whereas uh, in previous relationships, I never felt safe, especially if you get cheated on and it's repeated or if you get whatever, you just don't feel safe around that person. Not only physically, you don't feel safe with them emotionally, right? So for me, mentally, I feel protected and safe. Physically, definitely feel protected and safe. You know, it's the little things that someone will, when you're walking on the road and they'll move you to the other side so that he's on the side where the cars are passing and all of that, but I'm more on the pavement. It's small things like that where you feel safe, where you feel protected and secure. For me, that stand out quite a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, so that makes, that's the one thing that stands out, but also how softly I'm treated. Um, when it comes to my emotions and just just generally I'm treated quite softly in this relationship Which also makes it very very different to my previous relationships Hi Kat, I'd like to ask how did you come to the decision of not showing him online? I suppose did you guys discuss it or are you just not one of those people who flaunts your relationships? Is it protecting your brand related? I ask because I'm not sure how to go about uh, my current relationships privacy I'm private, I'm not secretive. It had nothing to do with him. I've always been this way. Even though you've been following my channel for a while and years and you know that I was in a previous relationship, never showed him as well. It was always a thing that I do not show my partners, but also, not only for myself, but it's protecting the individual. But it's also protecting the individuality of that person. I don't want when he's out with his mates at a gig or at a function or whatever, now people are staring at him on some, oh, that's a close man, that's a close man, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And the next thing, I start getting WhatsApps, not WhatsApps, I start getting DMs on Twitter and this and this about, hey, we, we seeing, I'm seeing your man at Sand Deck, or I'm seeing your man at Hyde Park or whatever. No, this person for me still feel, still needs to be entitled to his privacy. And this person is private. He's very private about his life. What he does, who he does it with, extremely private. I could go into detail about how private he is, but that's just the even, it's not my business to share, right? So for me, it's what I've always wanted. It's how I've always been. It's not gonna change today. Um, and, and, and he's been like that as well. So it's protecting myself, but also protecting him as well as his own person, individuality. And that's all that matters to me. How does he handle your mental health issues with complete understanding and softness? If I do not want to talk about it, we're not going to talk about it. Um, you'll tell me when you're ready, right? This is one of the things that he said to me this past weekend. And I didn't want to talk about something, but I ended up telling him at the end of the night. But he said, you'll tell me when you're ready, you know? So it's just that kind of, that kind of thingy, you know what I'm saying? But um, uh, he's just really soft and he's also learning. I mean, it's, it's, it hasn't been that long, but it feels like it's been forever because I've known him for this long. But he's also learning how to navigate around me on my mental health days. I just know not to, you know, to try not to take it out on him uh, on my bad mental health days. Um, how do you solve arguments? Girl, we drink. <clears throat> I'm actually telling the truth. But at the same time, don't know. No. <laughs> Gents, okay. We crack jokes to open the floor, to break the ice. We'll make a little bit of a stupid joke and then we will sit down, pour a drink and we will talk about what the problem is. And if that means we'll talk about it for the next three hours, that's exactly what we're going to do. If we're going to be in a conversation for the next two hours over the phone, discussing that I didn't like that you said this, then that's exactly what we're going to do. So we sit down, we talk about it. Um, we might walk away from the situation for a little bit while it's still hot. And then we'll come back to it later. I feel like he does that more than I do, but uh, we, we kind of do it that way. Yeah. Um, 
Would you forgive your partner if he slept with a very close friend of yours? Is that a trick question? Come on, baby girl. Mm -mm. Can you date someone in different economic stages? No car versus car, 10K versus 60K monthly. I've spoken about this in my money versus relationships, money and relationships uh, video. And uh, it's too much of a leap for me personally to be with somebody who doesn't have a car. That's honestly the truth for me. At the point where I'm at in my life, emotionally, physically, blah, 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 it was hard enough. And you know what the funny thing is? When I started now with Mr. X, now I'm calling him Mr. X. Uh, when I started now with him in our 20s, he didn't have a car. Um, and, and I did. And now we are quite comfortable. And now I, I appreciate, and he would always say that, you know, you chose me even when I didn't have a car. And now I feel is the time when I can give back to you all the things that you like showed me and gave to me, whether emotionally or whatever, whatever, back then. So, sounds pretty good. I think he's a winner. Um, yeah. So I think that's pretty much where I'm going to end this video this is my relationship q and a i hope it gives you a little bit more insight if you enjoyed the video please like thumbs up what what if you like to see more relationship content with obviously without um him being present and all of that but more relationship based videos then tell me what you'd like to see uh subscribe to the channel definitely click that notification bell and i will see you in the next video keep well and i'll see you soon Bye.